Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Good morning. Well, let's see. For me, it's Wednesday morning, and you'll be watching this Friday morning. Yep, the video will be up for my patrons for a couple of days, but you'll see this Friday morning, which means tonight, for you, is QRP night, and for me, and I should be really pumped at this time. Well, it's going to be an interesting year for QRP night here, anyway. Fortunately, our local field day site is at the old fort recreation here in Fort Wayne. They have a rebuilt model of the original fort that's full size for uh, a tourist attraction. Um, and uh, we set up our field day site there every year now. It's great because there are indoor rooms, you know, in the old fort. And it's all wooden, wooden mortar. It's built the way the original fort was built. Uh, but that's good because I just looked at the weather for this Friday. Here it is. Ugh, thunderstorms Friday and Friday night, 90% chance. Oh, man. Well, okay. No, we'll still do it, of course. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, there was a land cyclone that came through the night before field day, and we still did QRP night. No, we'll, we'll, we'll be out there for sure, and I hope to hear a bunch of you on the air. But that brings to mind antennas. If we're going to have thunderstorms going on, what am I going to do for an antenna for QRP night? Well, I have a plan, and I've already built it. Now, a few videos back, I showed you the uh, hula hoop antenna, which I've used as a prototype for all kinds of tests in the past. And I had set it up to be a receive antenna for 630 meters. Um, what I did was I put uh, antenna rotor cable through the middle of it, which is four wire cable. And I ran it through three times, which gave me 12 turns. And I was able to get it to resonate for 630 meters, and it worked okay for receive. My plan was to make it a transmitting loop as well, a magnetic loop. But I could not get it to couple up reliably and produce a reliably low SWR. I think, I'm pretty sure, this is all speculation of course, but I'm pretty sure it's because the windings inside the uh, hula hoop were chaotic. You know, the... The cables were just laid over each other and run through the loop and, and wrapping around each other, no doubt. So there was no linearity to the windings. And I'm pretty sure that's why I could not use it as a transmitting loop. Uh, if, if you uh, have ever seen uh, loop antennas for medium wave, I'll find a picture or two and throw them up here. Uh, the windings are always linear and organized and even and symmetrical uh, and nicely spaced. And I think that that is a very important factor if you're going to try to use it as a transmitting loop. Uh, I think it needs to be that way for it to couple up. So I'm going to rebuild the medium wave loop using a wood framework where I can wind the windings like that nice and orderly <clears throat> and uh, consistent and uh, try that for my 630 meter transmitting loop. And that frees up the hula hoop yet again for more experiments. So QRP night, I need an antenna that I can use indoors, probably, inside one of those little rooms because it's going to be pouring rain, maybe thunder and lightning, and I don't want to run something up the flagpole if there's a lot of lightning. So I've turned the hula hoop antenna into a standard magnetic loop. And it's working quite well, and I'll show it to you right now. So back in the left corner, you can see my old big monster three-foot magnetic loop. I was originally going to take that out there, but that has to be set up outside on a stand. I wanted something a little bit more portable. So here's the hula loop, and it's now been converted to a regular magnetic loop. Down here, we have two tuning capacitors. I've got a larger tuning capacitor and a much smaller one that's parallel with it for fine tuning. Uh, the wire inside the loop itself is that four wire rotor cable. Uh, what I did was I took two runs of it and I stripped the ends of all the wires and tied them all together. So I've got eight wires total and I taped the two ribbons together so they were very nice and uniform and ran them through the loop. So they're nice and flat and uniform going up through the loop. Eight wires uh, total which gives it plenty of conductivity, lowers the radiation resistance uh, and it seems to work pretty well. <clears throat> 
um, the coupling loop uh, to keep it symmetrical and uniform I 3d printed a 200 millimeter ring that's about uh, oh about a third to a half an inch tall about as thick as the ribbon cable the rotor ribbon cable to use as a form and that form allows it to stay symmetrical um, symmetry is really important now you'll notice that I squashed the top of the loop here uh, a while back I had another video where I was exploring squashing the magnetic or the coupling loop a little bit flattening it out along the top part of the loop and I discovered that that improved the SWR and I verified that again with this loop when I first put it together this was just a circle and I measured it with the VNA uh, the, the network adapter or yeah vir virtual network analyzer and uh, on 40 meters I had an SWR of 1.143 to 1 at the lowest and an impedance of 57 ohms uh, so what I did then was I started to slowly squash the loop I started drawing it up with this tape here and here to flatten out the top just a little bit and the SWR went down and the impedance went down closer to 50 ohms and I got it squished out about this far I could probably go a little bit further but at this point my SWR was down to 1.12 to 1 and the impedance was at 52.3 ohms, so close to 50. So probably if I squished it just a little bit further, I might even get it down to 50 ohms and a one-to-one -one SWR. But the point is, um, this is the third time that I've done this, and in every case that I've squashed the top part of the loop a little bit against the outer loop, um, it has improved the SWR, and it has brought the impedance down closer to 50 ohms. So that is definitely an improvement you can do on a magnetic loop um, flatten out that top of the loop of the coupling loop a little bit right up against the outer loop seems to certainly does seem to help I've done it three times now and every time it's improved things so anyway <clears throat> this is going to be my QRP night antenna overall the antenna is very portable it's lightweight it's uh, stable what I did to stabilize it here is I, I took a small flat piece of board anchored it to the base, strapped it at the top, so the loop is very stable. Um, I ran the BNC connector through here so it was right at the coupling loop, so you, the connection is extremely short to the coupling loop. And the uh, coupling loop is the same ribbon that I used inside the loop, uh, so the diameter matches the diameter of the ribbon in the loop. And that seems to help too. It's very stable. I can tune it with these capacitors. I can tune it from uh, just above 5 megahertz up to almost 17 meters. I've got just a bit too much capacity here. Um, I probably need to find a variable cap that's a little bit lower. This one goes to 300 picofarad. Uh, I could probably get by with one that goes to 150 and still get down to 40 meters. Uh, but I left it together for now because I'm really only interested in 40 and 20 meters for QRP night. So this antenna will be able to be placed. You can see it's, it's lightweight. Uh, it'll fit in the back of my car just fine. Um, it'll be able to be placed on a table in one of the rooms at the old fort right next to where I'm operating and uh, quickly tuned with the uh, fine tuning capacitor there which works great by the way paralleling a smaller uh, variable cap with your big variable cap makes tuning these things a snap you, you tune the big cap until you hear the noise peak on your receiver and you're almost there and then you throw out a carrier and you quickly fiddle the uh, small cap to get your SWR down to the lowest. And it's, it's painless to tune with, with the uh, smaller cap in parallel. So I'd recommend doing that on, on your magnetic loop designs. Obviously, uh, you want to use as thick of a, of a conductor as possible to connect the two capacitors in parallel and also to connect them to the, to the loop itself. You want to keep that resistance down as low as possible for efficiency. So the loop is presently hooked up to the Yaesu FT817 and I've been uh, doing whisper transmissions for about an hour and uh, looking over at the map now I'm on 20 meters it's early morning so 20 isn't quite open yet but I'm getting down into uh, Texas I'm getting up into Minnesota I'm getting out to the East Coast and this is at 500 milliwatts um, with the loop here in the in the room so um, I'm pretty happy with that uh, I'm gonna do some more playing around a little later today uh, with PSK, maybe try to make a sideband or CW contact on it, but I think it's going to work fine for QRP night tonight. <laughs> for me, it's Wednesday. For you, it's Friday, so tonight. So, um, 
hope to hear and uh, talk to several of you on the air uh, tonight at QRP night. And uh, also, um, I will be doing a video, of course. So you'll see a video of uh, the activities tonight um, later next week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.